All right. All right. All right. Let's do this. Last week, let me hit the subscribe button. That's their new subscribe button. Hi. Last week, we learned that during the first two years of Donald Trump's presidency, he was never audited. Even though it has been the Internal Revenue Service's official policy for decades to conduct a thorough audit of every president's tax returns each year. Each year that you're president, you're supposed to be audited. Trump wasn't audited. How is such a thing possible? How come the president's audit didn't begin until Democrats took control of the House in 2019? That's when Chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Richie Neal, asked to see Donald Trump's tax returns, and the IRS thought, well, I guess we better audit him. They're watching us. Well, we now know the answer, and it's not what you think. Now, last week on the show, I made excuses for the Internal Revenue Service. I said they were outgunned by Trump's lawyers and accountants, and while that's partly true, it's not the real reason Trump wasn't audited while he was president. Last week on the show, I said Trump's tax returns were simply too complicated. He was running his money through hundreds of shell corporations, and the IRS simply didn't have the expertise or time to unravel those Byzantine returns. Now, while that's partly true, it's not the reason Trump wasn't audited when he was president. No, nope, it's not the real reason his audits still have not been completed. His audits from his presidency, his tax returns when he was president, those audits have not been completed. So what is the reason Trump wasn't audited during the first two years of his presidency and the last two years of his presidency, those audits still have not been completed? What is the reason? Well, it's right in front of us. It's disturbing, disgusting, and it's why Trump should be forbidden from ever holding elective office again, which is well within the right of Congress to decide. You know, the January 6th committee last week recommended that Donald Trump be banned from ever holding elective office again, and he should be. Now, I'm going to tell you the reason Trump wasn't audited when he was president. It's very disturbing. But first, hi, I'm David Feldman, and this is The Mop Up. You know, I don't know what upsets me more. Uh, the, the reason Trump wasn't audited or the fact that nobody is reporting what I'm about to tell you. And I'll tell you the whole story in, in just a moment. But first, I hope you had a wonderful holiday. Christmas morning, I woke up early, looked at my window, saw a brand new Lexus right in front of me. That's one of the many advantages to passing out drunk behind the wheel of your car in a Toyota dealership parking lot. Here are some family memories of a Feldman Christmas. Cousin Hirsch celebrates the birth of Jesus on the 27th of December because Christmas trees are always half price. For Christmas, Cousin Leslie's grandmother thought she'd make a photo album from all the revenge porn Leslie's old boyfriend, Mitch, posted on the internet. These are some of my family memories of Christmas. At exactly 12.01 a.m. December 26, Aunt Sheila of Sac City, North Dakota, woke her grandkids up and screamed, Okay, Christmas is over. Time to undress the tree, pack up all the tinsel for next year, and I want you all out of here in exactly 45 minutes. That would be at exactly 12.01 a.m. December 26. Well, Christmas dinner was going so well until Uncle Matt decided to hold his three-month-old grandson right before the Packers scored a touchdown. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the, the grandkid, but the Packers did score, so that's good. Uncle Matt, because Uncle Matt is an intolerant white Christian nationalist, nothing, <laughs> nothing pleases him more than imitating Mr. Lustig 
little Franny's overly flamboyant second grade music teacher. He's imitating Mr. Lustig. Uncle Matt is a, a POS. Well, speaking of POSs, let's talk about Trump's taxes. I shared some family photos. Now it's time to get to work and talk about Donald Trump's taxes. During the first two years of Trump's administration, the president was never audited. The IRS is supposed to audit him, but they didn't. You know who did get audited? Former FBI director James Comey. And not just any audit. There is a very specific type of audit that the IRS conducts. And these intensive audits are called the National Research Program. This is true. It's called the National Research Program. This is such a thorough and invasive audit that the New York Times says tax attorneys refer to it as, quote, an autopsy without the benefit of death. The New York Times reported back in July of this year that of the nearly 135 million tax returns filed each year, only 5,000 are ever chosen for these audits of all audits. And James Comey was chosen in 2017. That was the very same year Donald Trump fired James Comey as head of the FBI because Comey wouldn't stop looking into the role Vladimir Putin played in getting Donald Trump elected. Trump fired Comey in May of 2017. Days later, Trump told Lester Holt of NBC News that he fired Comey because Comey wouldn't stop looking into Russiagate. And then weeks after Comey was fired, he was informed that he and his wife were getting the audit from hell, the audit of all audits, the capo de tutti capo of audits. Now, there is a one out of 30,600 chance that any one of us will get that big audit. That's according to the New York Times. And the IRS is very secretive. They refuse to say how you end up getting picked for, from the chorus line for that, that audit. Now, coincidences do happen, right? James Comey is the president's mortal enemy. Trump fires him because he was FBI director and he wouldn't stop snooping around about Russiagate. Comey fires him. A couple months later, Comey gets audited. Hmm, big audit, the big audit. What are the odds? Well, they say one out of 30,600. So it is in the realm of possibilities. This ferocious audit of James Comey took more than a year to complete, and you'll be relieved to know that Comey and his wife filed false tax returns. Turns out they were right for auditing him. Comey overpaid his taxes and was entitled to a $347 refund. So, you know, good use of our government's time, right? The audit ended up costing James Comey $5,000 in accounting fees, and the Internal Revenue Service spent at least 50 hours working on his case. But they uncovered that $347 refund, so it was all worth it. Well, from May until August of 2017, right after James Comey was fired, Andrew McCabe served as acting FBI director. And one of the first moves as acting FBI director was to order an obstruction of justice investigation into why Trump fired Comey. Trump did not like his new FBI director, Andrew McCabe. So when it came time to pick a new FBI director a few weeks later, McCabe was passed over, and he went back to being deputy director of the FBI, and then some other nightmare ensued that I don't want to get into it. But here's the point. 
like James Comey, Andrew McCabe, who Trump detested, Andrew McCabe also got the same exact audit that Comey got the same exact year. What are the odds? What are the odds that the two men who Trump accused of treason, what are the odds that they would be audited by the IRS? Two former heads of the FBI that Trump fired because they were looking into Russiagate. They get fired and then they get the maximum audit from the IRS in the same year. What are the odds? It is impossible to calculate those odds. There isn't a, an adding machine or a computer big enough. Big Blue can't even calculate this. Now, The Hill reports that on December 1st of this year, okay, the Treasury Inspector General for Tax Administration announced that after a careful inspection, they have concluded that it was merely a coincidence that two former FBI chiefs who Trump considered to be mortal enemies, it was just a coincidence that both of them ended up getting the most rigorous tax audit during the same exact year they were both fired by Donald Trump. Just a coincidence. Well, that's a relief, right? I mean, if the, the Treasury Inspector General says there was no foul play, I guess we should believe the, the Treasury Inspector General. However, there is the small problem of General John F. Kelly, who served as Donald Trump's second chief of staff. Last month, it was reported that General Kelly said in a written interview with the New York Times that Donald Trump specifically ordered General Kelly, his chief of staff at the time, to, quote, get the IRS on Comey and McCabe. General Kelly says that he thought he had explained to Donald Trump why it's against the law for a president to order the audit of a political opponent. And he thought that was the end of it. Now, theoretically, General Kelly, chief of staff, should have gone immediately to the FBI to report the crime, the crime of a sitting U.S. president ordering an audit of his political opponents. That's against the law. You would think General Kelly, who swore an oath, would choose to protect the Constitution over Donald Trump. But instead, he chose to protect Trump. And I'm not quite sure if General Kelly committed a crime by not reporting Trump's crime to the FBI, the crime of a sitting president ordering an IRS audit of his enemies. I'm not sure if that's a dereliction of duty or an actual federal crime, not going to the FBI and turning your president in. I'm not sure. But it does speak volumes to General Kelly's complete and utter lack of character. It speaks volumes to everyone in that Trump White House who put Trump Trump before duty, which brings me back, speaking of duty, which brings me back to where we started. James Comey and Andrew McCabe headed the FBI in 2017. Trump's first year in office, and he fired them. He accused them both of committing treason because they wouldn't stop investigating Trump's relationship with Vladimir Putin. The very same year both men, Comey and McCabe, are chosen for the audits of all audits. And yet, Donald Trump, who was so busy telling his chief of staff, General Kelly, to get the IRS to audit those two, right, Comey and McCabe, he also wanted audits, according to Kelly, of Hillary Clinton and former CIA director John O'Brennan. He wanted audits of Jeff Bezos, who, besides Amazon, also owns the Washington Post, which is highly critical at times of Donald Trump. He wanted Lisa Page and Peter Stroke 
audited. Those were the two FBI agents who were deep into the Russiagate investigation. He wanted all those people audited. All these people Trump ordered to be audited. Kelly didn't follow the orders, but Trump ordered these people to be audited. And yet the mandatory audit that is supposed to take place for every sitting president was never conducted by our internal revenue service. What now are the odds? What are the odds that both Comey and McCabe, who used to head the FBI, would both get audited, but Donald Trump wouldn't? Incalculable. So you might ask who oversaw the Internal Revenue Service at the time. John Kuskinen was the outgoing commissioner that year. He was an Obama appointment. And it's kind of like the Federal Reserve. They stre- they st- their five-year terms, the Fed is six, but the IRS commissioner is five years, and they stagger it. They try to stagger it in between uh, presidents so it's, uh, they can't be influenced, supposedly. Okay, so uh, John Kuskinen was the IRS commissioner in 2017. He was about to re- be replaced in 2017 by Charles Reddick, who was named IRS commissioner in 2018. So remember, 2018 is the year Comey and McCabe were being audited, and Trump was supposed to be audited, and he wasn't. Now, Reddick in all fairness, wasn't in charge of the IRS when the audits for FBI directors Comey and McCabe started because those audits started back in 2017. But Reddick was in charge in 2018 when when those audits were being wrapped up and Trump's audits still had not begun. Jordan Leibowitz writes over at Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington. It's called CRU. Uh, People should go to that website, Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, CRU. In September of 2020, two years ago, Leibowitz wrote about Charles Rettig, the commissioner of the IRS at the time. Trump was still president, right? 2020, September. Now, Leibowitz wrote this two years ago without the benefit of knowing that Trump had not been audited his first two years in office. We just found this out last week. He didn't know, Leibowitz didn't know two years ago that FBI heads Kobe, Comey and McCabe were being audited. We just learned that earlier this year. But this is the article from two years ago. Okay, it's an article entitled Trump's IRS chief has made hundreds of thousands from Trump properties while in office. Huh? This is based on reporting also done by Caroline Zhang, who's also uh, a writer over at Crew. She revealed back in 2019 that when Reddig was picked to become IRS commissioner, he initially neglected to disclose that he owned real estate at a Trump-branded property in Hawaii where Reddick earned anywhere between $100,000 to $200,000 a year on rent and royalties. He was a business, partner's, business partner of Trump's. That's why Trump named him to head the IRS. Now, Reddick is no longer IRS commissioner. He left the job last month. He left last month. But it was his job to release Trump's tax returns when the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Richie Neal, demanded them back in 2019. But Reddick, he didn't release them because Reddick is a Trump loyalist. Now, by law, as you all know, the IRS must turn over any tax return of any citizen, including the president of the United States, 
if it's requested by the House Ways and Means Committee, if the House Ways and Means Committee or any tax committee in, in the House or Senate wants to see somebody's tax returns, by law, they get to see those tax returns. Doesn't matter whose. In fact, according to the Revenue Act of 1924, if the head of the IRS refuses to turn over the president's tax returns, the sergeant of arms can march into the building and arrest him. In 1927, in McGrain v. Doherty, our Supreme Court ruled that Congress has the power to compel witnesses to appear and provide testimony. And if they don't appear, the sergeant of arms can arrest them. The Washington Post report in 2019, back when the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, Richie Neal, Democrat, first asked for Trump's tax returns, and Reddick, Trump's loyalist who was running the commission, said, um, I'm not sure yet, I'm not sure yet. Uh, the Washington uh, Post reported that the chairman of the uh, House Ways and Means Committee, Richie Neal, had the power to order the arrest of Reddick and Steve Mnuchin, who was then Secretary of the Treasury. If they weren't going to turn over the tax returns, it was well within uh, the legal right of Richie Neal, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, to send the sergeant of arms over to the IRS and the Treasury Department and arrest Steve Mnuchin and Reddick, but Richie Neal didn't do it. Didn't do it. It took three years to get Trump's tax returns because why? Because he installed loyalists like Steve Mnuchin in Treasury and Charles Reddick over at the IRS. Reddick was never going to turn over Trump's tax returns unless the courts made him. And he was never going to audit Donald Trump until Richie Neal, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, began snooping around and Charles Reddick said, OK, we better start an audit of Donald Trump, which they still haven't completed. When Donald Trump appointed Reddick, Charles Reddick, to be commissioner of the IRS, he did so to protect himself and ruin his enemies as well as destroy the IRS. Under Reddick's command, thousands upon thousands of IRS agents were fired, making it impossible for our government to collect taxes. Trump wasn't just appointing a loyalist to run his, what he thought was his, Internal Revenue Service. This was an attempt to confiscate every lever of power inside of the executive branch and make it work for him. Grab hold of the IRS by appointing a loyalist who will protect your tax returns, refuse to audit you, and when you have to be audited, he'll slow it down, and most importantly, uh, turn a blind eye. Turn a blind eye. If someone from the White House walks into the Internal Revenue Service and demands an audit of the president's enemies. Now, again, Charles Reddick had nothing to do with those audits of FBI directors James Comey, James Comey and Andrew McCabe. He probably didn't even know those audits were going on when he took over in 2018. But he did know that the IRS is supposed to be auditing a sitting president every year. He is, Charles Reddick, is considered one of America's top tax attorneys. Charles Reddick was a Trump loyalist who was appointed commissioner of the IRS specifically because he was on record. He wrote a piece for Forbes magazine, I think in 2016, where he said Donald Trump doesn't have to turn over his tax returns. Reddick is a tax attorney from Beverly Hills who went on record saying he didn't think a sitting president should obey the law and turn over his tax returns. He became president in 2017. 
He was asked, are you going to reveal your taxes when you're president? And Charles Reddick, tax attorney in 2016, wrote a piece in Forbes saying, presidents don't have to obey that law. It took three years, three years for the case of Trump's tax returns to go before the Supreme Court. And last month, the Supreme Court finally said what everyone knew already, that Trump had to turn over his tax returns to Richie Neal, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. Charles Reddick, the outgoing IRS commissioner, he left uh, last month, he knew exactly what he was doing. He's a Beverly Hills tax attorney. He knew exactly how to play this game. Delay, delay, delay. Why delay? To protect his business partner, Donald Trump. Right, Charles Reddick makes at least $200,000 a year from a Trump property. We still haven't seen uh, the results of uh, Donald Trump's two presidential audits because they're not done. Because for the powerful, there is no accountability. Laws only apply to you and me. Men are doing time tonight for unpaid bench warrants on a busted taillight. But Donald Trump walks free. Donald Trump learned early on from mafia lawyer Roy Cohn that laws don't apply to the powerful. There are so many crimes Trump has committed, so many, and yet he walks free. And because of this, partly because of Trump, Americans have lost faith in our criminal justice system. And when that happens, when Americans stop believing there's justice, they stop believing in America. Do you remember Michigan Governor Rick Snyder, Republican, multimillionaire, ran for governor of Michigan, became governor? He was the one who decided to run Michigan like a business as governor to save money. Uh, the people of Flint, Michigan, he decided, would be getting their water uh, from Flint River and no longer from Lake Huron, which was clean. So the people of Flint started getting their drinking water from Flint River, but the Flint River water was so polluted, it corroded the pipes. And lead in the pipes began seeping into the drinking water. It got so bad, the local car manufacturers in Flint said they needed to switch back to water from Lake Huron because the water from Flint River was destroying the insides of the engines they were manufacturing. So the car company got the old water back, but not the residents of Flint, Michigan, who happened to be predominantly African-American. They were forced to drink tap water from Flint River, and tens of thousands of mostly African-American children have been exposed to permanent lead poisoning. Permanent. Now, two major studies, one from a university and one from a major news gathering organization, prove that Governor Snyder mishandled the Flint water crisis and was criminally negligent. And anybody who's been following this story, well, we all expected Rick Snyder to go to prison, but he's not. Two weeks ago, a judge threw out the case against Rick Snyder, and they dismissed all criminal charges. And eight, eight cronies of Governor Snyder, they, they were involved in the Flint water disaster. They too, they too have had their cases thrown out. Meanwhile, Rick Snyder was worth millions before he was governor of Michigan. He's no longer governor of Michigan, but he's worth millions and millions and millions more. Now, I know a lot of you think locking up Donald Trump is a waste of time. You think it won't solve income inequality. You think locking up Donald Trump won't stop our endless wars, fix homelessness, 
or provide free health care for all Americans. I disagree. There can be no progressive movement without laws. Those laws must be obeyed. You have to pass these laws and then make sure they're enforced. For example, the Clean Water Act, the Clean Water Act is a law. And Rick Snyder should be locked up for life for violating that law. There is no progress without laws, and those laws must be enforced. Otherwise, there is no progress. Medicare, beautiful Medicare, is a law. You don't have Medicare without it first being passed as a law. People like Florida Senator Republican Rick Scott, who ripped off Medicare before becoming a politician, he ripped off Medicare to the tune of roughly $1 billion, probably double that. Uh, Florida Senator Rick Scott should be in prison, not making settlements as he did with our Justice Department. He ran a health care company. They ripped off our government for more than a billion dollars, and he made a financial settlement instead of going to prison, where right now we have men doing time for failing to obey a bench warrant on a busted taillight. He should be in prison. He just didn't break the law. Senator Rick Scott just didn't break the law. He violated one of the most sacred laws we have, Medicare. Medicare provides medicine and doctors and hospitalization to our grandparents. Rick Scott should be in prison. He stole a billion dollars at least from Medicare. Instead, he settles with the Justice Department for close to one billion and runs for senator of Florida. Nothing can get done in America without first passing a law, and then that law must be obeyed. If you want free tuition at all public universities, that's a law that has to be passed and then obeyed. If you want single-payer health care, that's a law that must be passed and then obeyed. There is no democracy. There is no freedom. There is no progressive movement in this country without laws and then making sure those laws are obeyed. We have a crime problem in America, a serious crime problem in America, not on the streets, in our government, in our corporation, in our corporations. And it is time to put those proverbial heads on sticks and say, here is what happens. Here is what happens when you break our laws. You are doing time. Trust me, you lock up Trump and his cronies, it gets contagious. This is what happened after Watergate. You start locking up these people, it gets contagious. And that's when real progressive reform starts to kick in. Because the American people, you lock up Trump, they will taste blood and demand more of Trump's ilk go to prison. And when enough... When enough of these mental defects like Donald Trump are locked up, then it will be safe for progressives. Donald Trump's crowd loves to chant, lock them up. They're absolutely right. If you enjoyed this segment of The David Feldman Show, please subscribe to this channel. Hit the like button. I'm David Feldman reminding you to stay strong and protect the weak.